Today, it's all about spicy fried noodles and how to do it with my bulletproof Asian method. These noodles are fragrant, fresh and colourful and with a few dollops of chilli sauce, even Buddha couldn't be happier. You can make noodles with almost any meat or vegetables, even leftovers, and here's how it's done. I like meat in my noodles. Anything will do. Chicken, beef. Uh, I'm using pork shoulder in this case. It's a bit fatty, gives you more flavour. I've got about 10 and a half ounces or 300 grams, which is more than enough for four people. Thinly slice the meat into small regular slices. This is important so that it can cook quickly and stay juicy. Also, if the pieces are small, it marinates much quicker. About 15 to 20 minutes is enough. The time it'll take you to get your veg ready. Now to marinate the meat, just remember you need to balance the flavors of Asiatic food. The base is in equal proportions, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of oyster sauce, which gives you a meaty, savory flavor. Add about one tablespoon of my special rice wine. This is my special mix which I will share with you later. This will set you up for all other Asian dishes. It gives you instant Asian fragrance to your preparations. Next, add about a tablespoon of kikkerman soy sauce. I like the Japanese kikkerman soy sauce because it's really fruity. The Chinese ones I find too salty. I'm going to add about a quarter of a tablespoon of dark soy sauce. I'm using dark soy sauce because it gives colour. It's not at all salty. Did you just see that I overdid that? I poured too much in. You should have done that out of the bowl. Let's learn a lesson. To this we're going to add about three turns of white pepper. I like white pepper because it's a little hotter than black pepper, but it's not as complex in flavour. Now we're going to be adding about one tablespoon of potato starch. This is very important because this will actually help bind all the liquid ingredients together in the marinade. And at the same time during cooking, it will actually protect the meat. And also I like potato starch as opposed to um, corn flour or something like that because it is very neutral in flavour. Add about one tablespoon of vegetable oil or any other kind of oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, anything that's neutral. Give it a mix up, a good old mix up so everything sticks together. Now just film it up and stick it aside for 15 to 20 minutes to marinate. Peel two small cloves of garlic and then finely mince them. If you don't want to cut them up, you could always use a garlic crusher. But the problem is the finer the garlic is, the stronger it becomes, it's less delicate. Peel about an inch and a half thick piece of ginger, fresh ginger, and finely slice it up into fine matchstick shapes. This will give you better flavour and texture to your noodles. And then just set them aside. Next, take four mushrooms, cut them in half. I've got brown mushrooms, but you can use white mushrooms. The brown ones are a little bit more tasty. Slice them really thinly so that they can flash cook and keep all their lovely uh, lovely flavours and everything and just set them aside. Next you're going to take two lovely washed spring onions or scallions. Cut the beards off and then you've got to separate them into the white part from the green part. Then slice them lovely into at an angle on a diagonal. That's more aesthetic. Then you've got to do the same thing with the green parts and then all you've got to do is keep them separately and I'm going to show you why later. Just put them aside and we're ready to go. Now next we'll continue with the vegetables. We're going to peel two nice carrots and now we're going to just slice them into like matchstick size. And I like matchsticks because it's important with Chinese cooking because the noodles are long and so the carrots have got to be long, the vegetables have got to be long. And just finely slice them up, not too thin, just like a little bit like a matchstick so that they cook and at the same time they remain crunchy. I like a little bit of crunch in my food. I like a bit of texture as well. That's why I like to cut them into this kind. It's all harmony, that's a secret. The next thing is to slice some courgettes in exactly the same manner. Make sure that they are in matchstick sizes so that they're even, they cook even, and they stay crunchy. Doesn't matter about the color. These ones are yellow, I know, but you can use the green ones. They also exist in orange. It doesn't really matter. The flavor is exactly the same. In fact, this kind of dish, you can use absolutely any vegetable that you want. I'm just using these because I had them to hand. 
Next I'm going to be using these Moroccan chilies. They're a little bit like bell peppers. They're not very strong. They're just slightly hotter than a bell pepper. I'm going to be slicing them in the exact same manner as all the other dishes so that we can keep the harmony of the noodles. These chilies do give a nice sweet flavour to the uh, dish without having a fiery taste in your mouth. Now to make these noodles a bit spicy I've got one deseeded red standard chilli which will spice up everything a little bit. I don't like too much chilli because I want to taste my food. Just chop them up finely into little pieces. After handling all those chilies, you must wash your hands thoroughly. You'll thank me later. Now for the noodles, get a large pan of water to the boil. Put the lid on, that will save you a lot of energy and time. Once the water is boiled, dump your noodles in. I'm using egg noodles, but any other kind will work, even spaghetti. Once it comes back to the boil, put the lid on and cut the flame. My package says three to four minutes, but check regularly that they stay firm and not mushy. Don't forget we're gonna be frying them. Once they're done, drain them off straight away and rinse them under running cold water so that you can get rid of all the starch so they don't stick and clump up. It's important to arrange all your cut vegetables in an orderly and logical fashion because stir frying gets quick, so everything must be quick to hand. Use the biggest, powerfulest burner that you can possibly get because you must get your pan hell hot. Once your pan is really smoking hot, I put in about two tablespoons of oil, vegetable oil, uh, anything you like, peanut oil, sunflower oil, anything that really has got a high smoking point. Once the oil is really hot, chuck in the carrots, which take the longest to cook, followed by the courgettes, then the Moroccan chilies, and then what you're gonna do is throw in about a teaspoon of the garlic, we've gotta work quick, and then about a tablespoon of fresh ginger. A few of the white spring onions, which take a little bit longer to cook, give that a little stir around, and a little flipping. And then what you're gonna do is add about uh, a cup of fresh, fresh bean shoots or bean, bean sprouts, followed by a little bit of the old Chinese wine, which has got aniseed in it, is really superb. Then you add about a nice good pinch of salt, which will help to soften all the vegetables up. About four turns of white pepper again, and then some of the fruity chicken in the sauce, not too much. That'll give it a nice little flavor. The last flip, and let's get rid of them onto a plate. The vegetables are still not quite fully cooked, but we're just gonna leave them. They're gonna continue cooking while we prepare the other ingredients. It's not necessary to clean the pan. You just keep the pan on the heat so it carries on heating. Then you put about a tablespoon of oil and now let's get going with the rest of the spices. We're going to be putting in the other half of the red chilies, the green chilies, and we're gonna be putting in some garlic, chopped garlic there. And now finally, we're gonna be putting in the aromatic ginger now we're just going to give that a little fry up now you can really smell that it's getting really fragrant now we're going to dump in our uh, pork and we're going to give that a nice little fry up so that it gets more or less cooked again we're using our special uh, rice wine that really is fragrant i can smell all that aniseed and now finally you're just going to chuck in the um, very thinly sliced mushrooms give that a flip and um, a little bit of water that's all about two tablespoons that will give us a little kind of like a juicy gravy. And now we're just finally chucking in the green parts of the spring onions. They don't need much cooking, just the flesh. We'll just set the meat aside with the vegetables till later. Okay, now for the noodles. Wipe the pan out, same deal, keep it hot. Add some oil, about a tablespoon, and give the noodles a good old frying up so that you can dry them out so that they don't clump up. Add a few more spring onions, give it a bit more flavor the noodles few drops of the special wine and water fragrance. Keep frying. Now add just a little bit of Kikum and soya sauce. That'll give it a slight bit of colour and a nice little bit of saltiness. Now dump in all our other ingredients and now it's just simply stirring around, warming and amalgamating all the flavours into the noodles. Let's give them a final flip and let's taste it. That's very important. Adjust the seasoning as necessary. You can add a little bit of soy sauce if you want, maybe a few little sprigs of uh, ginger or a bit of pepper, whatever you like. Adjust it according to your need. Okay, let's add the last little bits of green spring onions for a final little taste and stir, and now we're ready to serve. These noodles still retain a firm bite to them. 
You're hit first by the fresh flavours of the vegetables, then the intense savoury flavours of the pork, followed by the zesty notes of ginger, leaving you with a pleasant afterburn from the chilies. All you need now is a nice cold beer to wash it all down. If you don't take anything away from you in this video, take this, my special Chinese wine mix which I've developed over the years. This will set you up for all your Chinese cooking. Like a fine wine, it only gets better with time. As you use it, all you have to do is just top it up as you need. It will keep up to six months before you have to change any of the dried ingredients. So the two main ingredients is sake wine, rice wine, which is very, very, very soft in flavour. Then we've got the more powerful Jingshong wine, which is strong in fragrance. I prefer personally to dilate the two, which gives me a perfect balance of flavours. The next important ingredient is Galanja, which is a bit like ginger, but it's dried, but it's got a bit more citrus flavour to it. Gives a whole new dimension to the wine. I'm just going to take a jar, it's about half a cup, half a pint in volume. That's all that I need because I'm going to be changing it fairly regularly. All you have to do is put about 10 grams of Galanja into the jar, then dump in about an inch, inch and a half of cinnamon bark. Next you dump in two starred anise, which will give a lovely aniseed flavour. Put in about one tablespoon or 15 millilitres of dried coriander seeds. We're going to add about half a tablespoon or five millilitres of black peppercorns. Very complex and lovely. We're just going to marinate all that with about half of the sake. And then we're going to be adding the other half of the Xiaoxiong wine. And there you go. Just put a lid on it. Leave it for about a week, it'll be perfect. All those seeds will float to the bottom after about a week. You've got a gold mine there. Trust me.